Oh, but the good news is, not only has Amazon bought Whole Foods, so now you can get home delivery of your grocery. But the better news is this, that the bread of life makes house calls, that the God we serve will come to your address. He'll meet you right where you are and transform your house. Zacchaeus is that of a man who was able to acquire life's riches and fame. Zacchaeus represents the effort of many to acquire as much as you can and then can all you can get. But at the end of the day, Zacchaeus came to discover that finances are not everything. The Bible says that Zacchaeus was a publican. He was a tax collector. He was at the top of his game as it related to his profession. Tax collectors were in a category of robbers and murderers, hated and resented excommunicated from the synagogue, not permitted to worship with the saints. Because the idea was this, the Jews felt that anybody who would go to work for the Roman government to assess taxes against their own people was not worthy to worship in the synagogue. In fact, Zacchaeus, um, was so hated, resented, and despised that he knew it was dangerous and risky for him to even take a chance to go out in public. But he was a chief among tax collectors. He was a publican. He was a trainer, perhaps, and a manager of tax collectors. And because in biblical days they did not have mass communication, they didn't have social media, newspapers, radio, or television. Tax collectors were known for taking advantage of people. And the way that they would do it was that the Roman government had assessed a certain amount for everyone to pay. But no one really knew their assessed amount without mass communication. No UPS, no United States Postal Service. And so whatever the tax collectors demanded of a person, they had to pay it. And they would often charge people above what was required. And therefore they kept the rest for themselves. And that's why tax collectors were hated, they were resented and despised. Zacchaeus had it going on on the one hand. His finances said he was rich. But he recognized at some point in his life that riches alone are not enough. But that in reality, he needed righteousness. And I want to suggest to somebody today that as you go forward acquiring life's resources, as you seek to collect life's finances, that there's more to life than riches and fame. And that riches and fame can only do so much. But there will come a time in your life when you will recognize a need for God in your life. And here's what Zacchaeus discovers as he checks his bank accounts, as he checks his investments, his portfolio, his stocks and his bonds. He came to the realization that spiritually he was bankrupt. 
he had finances with no faith. And I want to suggest to you that finances can only take you so far. I want to suggest to you that there will come a time in your life when you're going to need some faith. In other words, finances will buy a house, but it will not buy a home. Finances will buy medicine, but they won't buy good health. Uh, finances, finances will, will, will buy you a bed, but it will not buy you a good night's sleep. Uh, finances can buy you sex, but it cannot buy you true love. F finances can buy you an automobile, but it, 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 it has a limit. Uh, they, they will not buy you a sense of destination. Uh, finances only take you so far. In fact, Job said, naked came I into the world, and naked shall I return. In other words, you, you can't take your finances with you. But where finances drop you all, faith will make the difference. And I want to suggest that you need some faith to go with your finances. Oh, Zacchaeus realized that his bank account was short when it came to his spirituality, and so he was no longer content with what he had because he recognized there was a void in his life as the preacher called out in the book of Ecclesiastes, vanity, vanity, all is vanity without God. And now Zacchaeus makes a decision to make uh, uh, some changes in his life. He's concerned about turning some things around and therefore Zacchaeus makes up in his mind that he's going to seek God. And I want to suggest to you that uh, the God we serve allows U-turns. I said the God we serve allows U-turns. I was traveling recently, and uh, as I was on the road in another state, and uh, I, I whipped around and made a U-turn. Uh, my host uh, informed me, listen, man, U-turns are not legal in our state. I said, you're right. I said, thanks for reminding me. I'm just used to driving in Texas. I need to tell you, U-turns are not always permitted uh, depending on the state in which you're traveling. But what I will suggest is this, that when it comes to God, U-turns are always permissible. The God we serve allows us to make U-turns. And right here in our text, we discover that Zacchaeus makes a U-turn in his life. He recognizes that the path he's on is headed to nowhere. And now he's concerned about developing righteousness in his life. And so he heard that Jesus was coming to town, and he decided that he would seek the Lord. And I, I like that. He decided to seek the Lord. And so he engages uh, his faith to the extent that he pursues the master. And I want to suggest to you today that you ought to seek the Lord. And the good news is if you seek him, you can find him. Uh, the Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And so Zacchaeus makes a decision to seek the Lord. And this is a risky decision. He has made many financial moves, but now he decides to make uh, a faith move. Tell somebody a faith move. And every now and then you ought to make a faith move. And here's how you know it's a faith move, because a faith move involves risk. Tell somebody risk. A lot of times people say, I'm operating uh, on faith, and I'm operating by faith. But in reality, they have a plan B, C, and a D for their lives. If this don't work, then I'll try that. And then if that don't work, then I'll try this here. But, but uh, a risk factor says if God doesn't come through, then I'm through. In other words, faith says God is all I've got. And can I give you some good news? Not only is God all you've got, but God is all that you need. Zacchaeus makes a decision that he's going to move in the direction of God, and now he makes a faith move. And I want to suggest that as you go through this life making financial moves, you ought to also make a faith move. It was risky 
for Zacchaeus to go down into the town square because there were many who wanted to get to him, many who wanted to lay hands on him, not holy hands, but they wanted to take him out because of his activities, his practices, uh, and how he had taken advantage of so many people. But he takes a chance. He goes down to the town square that he might relate to God and that God might relate to him. I wonder today, how desperate are you for God? How determined are you for God? In other words, Zacchaeus, he gets down to the town square. He realizes that the crowd is great and that uh, there's a press all around him. He realizes he's short in stature and, and he cannot see over the shoulders of those who are around him. And now he, he, he takes all of this into consideration and he says to himself that if I keep operating the way I'm operating, I, I stand a chance of missing Jesus when he passes by. I, I, I want to see him, but not only uh, does he say I want to see him, but I want to see him for who he is. And I wonder if there's anybody here that wants to see Jesus. But not just see him, but see him for who he is. Many religions affirm uh, uh, Jesus as a historical figure. In other words, they talk about him as a teacher or a prophet or one who has lived, but uh, they, they, they leave out the resurrection and they leave out the Son of God. But what makes the difference for us is that we understand that Jesus was more than a person of history, more than just a prophet, more than just a teacher. We, we understand and we affirm his death, that he died for the sins of the world, his burial and, and his resurrection, that he rose from the dead. And that makes all the difference in the world because Romans 10, 9 says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. And that's what Zacchaeus was simply dealing with. He did not just want to see Jesus as a person of history. He did not simply want to settle for being a curiosity seeker as many who were in the crowd were, but he wanted to see Jesus as his Lord and his Savior. And I've come to tell somebody that Jesus is the savior of the world. You gotta see him as your Lord and your savior. And so Zach goes down to the city square. He's hanging out, the crowd is thick. He's short in stature, but he's short spiritually. And now he, he discovers that Jesus is making his way through the town. And now Zach comes up with a decision, a, a, a desperate decision. And, but his desperate decision is one that's designed to move him in the direction of God. Now, I know people make a lot of desperate moves in life, but those moves are not always sanctified um, by spiritual concern. But here's Zach who's moving in a desperate way. He decides to climb up into a sycamore tree and he goes out on a limb so that he might see Jesus as he passes by. Now, I want to suggest that every now and then you ought to go out on a limb with your faith. We, we go out on a limb with our finances. We take risks with our finances. And we go out on a limb with our careers and we go out on a limb with our online dating looking for love and all. Mm -hmm. The other places, I'll just say it like that. But I want to suggest that you ought to go out on a limb for God. Uh, see if you can find God. I promise you, if you look for him, you'll find him. Uh, Zach is out there on that limb. He's taking a risk because the limb uh, uh, could possibly break and he could fall to the ground. But he's not worried about the risk. He's going out on a limb because he's looking for God. He's desperate for God. He desires God in his life. And now that he's out there on a limb, look what happens. Jesus passes by. He looks up and he sees Zacchaeus and he says to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today I must abide at your house. And a shout goes right there. Because not only 
uh -huh, does Jesus see him, but he calls him by his name. Zach is concerned about seeing Jesus, but the shout is this. Not only was Zach concerned about seeing Jesus, but Jesus actually saw him. And I want you to know that the God we serve, he knows each of us name by name. Oh, I need to tell somebody here that you are so precious in God's sight that the Bible teaches us that even the very hairs of our heads are numbered. And as you combed your hair this morning and strands of hair fell into the face bowl, God was counting every one of those hairs saying you are precious in my sight. Jesus saw Zacchaeus, called him by his name and said, make haste and come down for today I must abide at your house. Now the fact that Jesus said, make haste and come down suggests that there's an urgency about this matter of salvation. Some things you must do today. You can't put them off till tomorrow. Life has fleeting moments, moments you'll never see again. I was in St. Louis, uh, Missouri a couple of weeks ago, had trouble getting a rental car, struggled to get a hotel room. And whenever that's the case, I start inquiring of the locals, what's happening in town? Is there something big happening in the city? And they began to tell me people are coming from everywhere to observe the solar eclipse. I said, is that right? They said, yes. They said it has been indicated that the solar eclipse will pass over St. Louis, Missouri. And that this is one of the prime spots in the country to view the solar eclipse. People were spending good money to fly to St. Louis, good money to rent cars, and good money to rent hotels had sold out the city and bought uh, solar sunglasses uh, in order to view the solar eclipse. That, 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 that caused me to become curious, and I decided to do a little online research about this solar eclipse. I came to realize that this solar eclipse uh, is a rare occurrence over land and uh, they went on to say that in reality a, a solar eclipse happens every 18 months but because the world is so large and the majority of the world is water when they occur you really have to be at sea in order to see them. But what makes this one special is because it's now coming across land. Uh, in fact, the last one that uh, had occurred was in 1977. They said it'll be seven to eight years uh, uh, from now before there's another that occurs over land. And then as I continued the research, they said uh, that this solar eclipse will uh, last two minutes. But yet, uh, there are those who are making tremendous investment to see this uh, two-minute uh, phenomenon. It's a passing and fleeting moment. You got to be staged up, prepared, and ready because it's only going to last two minutes and then it will be over. And so people were staged up and positioned to see it. They did not want to miss it. I want to suggest to you that, uh, yeah, your, 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 your greatest concern is, is not, uh-huh, yes, the S-U-N, but rather the S-O-N. And, 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 and in reality, it, it's a fleeting moment also. It, it's a moment uh, uh, that you cannot bank on having again. That's why the old people say you ought to serve the Lord while the blood is running warm in your vein. And, and when they came to church, they used to sing a song saying, this might be my last time. I don't know. And that's why I'm going to serve the Lord while I can. This is a fleeting moment. The Bible says the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Tell somebody this is the day of salvation.
Oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus says to Zach, Mace hakest and come down. For today I must abide at your house. In other words, Zach, I need you to humble yourself. Come down out of the tree. Don't try to pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. Meet me on ground level. I know all about you. I know your past. I know who you are. You don't have to try to fix up your profile. You don't have to try to be something that you're not. Zach, meet me on ground level. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this house. Some of you know uh, uh, you can't trust what you see on Facebook when it comes to people's profiles. You can't trust what you see on dating websites because people have a tendency, uh-huh, to, uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm, falsify a little information so they can get a little action online. They call that fishing. And then when you meet them, you, 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 you have to have a, a plan B where you tell somebody, call me in 20 minutes because if this ain't working out, I got to get out of here. And oftentimes you hear other stories of people saying, you don't look like your profile. But I've come to tell you when it comes to our relationship with God, he knows us for who we are. He knows us for what we've done. But he says, you don't have to fake it in order to get my affection. Because I love you just the way you are. Zach, come down out of the tree. Meet me on ground level. Let me deal with your situation. And in fact, Zach, I want to go home with you. That's good news. That we serve a God who still makes house calls. Ah, we're living in a day and time where we work from home. We deal with online shopping from home. In fact, they showed on the news a, a story about a man who uh, spent an entire year locked in his house. He demonstrated his ability to order groceries online, order carry out food online pay his bills online and work online. Oh, but the good news is, not only has Amazon bought Whole Foods, so now you can get home delivery of your grocery. But the better news is this, that the bread of life makes house calls, that the God we serve will come to your address He'll meet you right where you are and transform your house. You've been watching HGTV, Property Brothers. You've been watching them make over homes, remodel this, that, or the other. But I've come to tell you, God's the original Property Brother. I want you to know that you are God's property. And if you invite him to go home with you, he will remodel your house. He'll transform your life. He'll help you turn your life around and get things together. Oh, Jesus said, Zach, I want to go home with you. Zach said, come on. They're now making their way to Zach's house. And the Bible says, that there were some so-called church folk, holy rollers, folk with halos on their heads, wings on their back, on their way to heaven anyhow. Folk who tried to claim they've never sinned, never made a mistake, never did anything wrong. Tell somebody they were liars. Mm, they tried to point out that Jesus was hanging out with a sinner. They said, look at Jesus. He's going home to be guests with a man that is a sinner. But I need to caution somebody right here. Before you spend too much time trying to focus on somebody else's sins and somebody else's shortcomings, the Bible says uh, all have sinned. I know there's some who say y'all have sinned, but you are a liar and the truth is not in you. 
but the word says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God yes the best of our righteousness is but as filthy rags in his sight but I'm so glad that the God we serve is not bothered by public opinion he's not bothered about what others think of you you know some folk are act fickle and funny when certain folk are around some folk will act like they don't know you mm -hmm, because they trying to impress somebody else I wish I had a witness here there's some folk who will talk to you on the sideline but when they get in a certain crowd they'll try to brush you off have I got a witness here but I'm so glad that God is not like that he doesn't care how folk criticizes him he doesn't care how folk talk about you he's in love with you have I got a witness here and so even though they tried to put Jesus on spot and on point for going home with a man that is a sinner Jesus went home with Zacchaeus anyway and when they got to Zacchaeus house a change took place in his life Zacchaeus confessed his wrongdoing he confessed his need for the Lord in his life and Jesus changed him and transformed his life turned his situation around and Zacchaeus said I'm giving half of my goods to the poor have I got a witness here and if I mistreated anybody along the way I'm giving them four times what I've taken from them and Jesus said in as much as you are a son of Abraham salvation has come to this house for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost I'm so glad that Jesus is in the saving business and can I testify when you really been changed it will change you from the inside out to purchase a copy of today's message in its entirety on CD or DVD, call us at 1-888-888-SJBC or visit our website. Join Pastor Denny D. Davis and the St. John family for one of our five weekend worship services, our Dress Down Casual service on Saturdays at 6 p.m. at our Grand Prairie location, or Sundays at Grand Prairie at 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m., or our South Lake campus at 10 a.m. St. John Church, ministering in multiple locations. Church Unleashed.